Beam down smoke. Investing in CSGO skins is complicated but not necessarily difficult. With the use of third-party marketplaces such as Buff and CS Deals, you can get skins for a lot cheaper than you normally would on the Steam community market, which only increases your profit margins from initial cash. I decided to take on the ultimate challenge. Starting from $500 with a budget of around $100 USD every week, I'm trying to double my money and make $1,000 off of CSGO investing only. This is Investment Odyssey. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed that little parody intro. Shout out to Nim Nim. If you do like Yu-Gi-Oh, go check his content out. Probably not a lot of you are into Yu-Gi-Oh, but hey, if you are, go check it out. It's pretty good content. Anyway, guys, let's get into this episode of Investment Odyssey with one quick word from a website. So you guys have already heard me talk about this site, and I'm hoping that it becomes one of the most popular sites in all of CSGO, but it's going to be Float Market. So if you want to check out Float Market, just be sure to use the link in the description below, and it's going to support the channel directly. They've got a lot of really cool skins, a lot of cool stickered items, and a lot of cool float-based items, and their UI is absolutely phenomenal. So anyway, go ahead, check out that link in the description below, and let's get into this episode. All right, guys, so let's take a look at that spreadsheet. As we can see, we have a massive amount of profit since the last investment period has been completed, and there's a lot of really good shining stars in this actual spreadsheet here. As you can see, that M4A4 Daybreak Factory New actually rose a crazy amount, and probably one of the most unsuspecting risers was actually that AK-47 Jet Set. Now, the Jet Set currently is worth around close to $200 on the lowest list on the Steam Marketplace, but it actually is not really worth up to that amount because there is a major problem and that's the fact that the buy orders are not really meeting up to that However, the buy orders are higher than the original before listed price, and so I've kind of averaged out a price and put it down on the spreadsheet there, and as you can see, we've made quite a lot of profit off of that. I call that unsuspected because we just bought the item, and I really didn't think it was going to increase that much over that last period there, but it did, and again, it is a little bit inflated. The buy orders are still pretty low compared to the lowest listing price, but it is still obviously rising in price quite a lot, so really cool that that happens, and a really nice fat amount of profit there. Now, if you look overall at the spreadsheet, and if you look at the side there where I calculated all the down and up, calculations for each of the items. As you can see, this is pretty much a pretty ideal spreadsheet. The main thing here is that those items that lowered didn't really lower that much, and the items that rose actually rose quite a lot. So really good there, a lot of really huge amounts of profit here. And as you can see, the differential down there that was calculated is looking really, really nice. We're actually up about $88 overall. All right, with the spreadsheet analyzed, let's go ahead and get into this week's pickups. So the first thing that I wanted to go ahead and check out were some of these stickers that have been going crazy recently. As some of you may have been able to tell, the stickers on the Steam community market from a variety of different majors and years have actually been doing absolutely insane. For example, the LDLC Hollow from Cologne 2014 actually rose almost double its original price, up to $100. That Dignitas Cologne Hollow, that rose all the way up to like around $400. And a lot of this is actually the result of manipulation that has been occurring in the wide scale market for a while now. It's a lot of Chinese buyers that are just really shooting the prices up like crazy and really projecting those items so that they can make a good amount of profit off of it. Obviously, I've already went over this in my previous video. If you don't really know what that's about, check out the previous video and I do a pretty good discussion on that. Now, if you notice in our spreadsheet, those vexed foils that we bought from the previous week, those ones actually went crazy and almost doubled in price on the Steam community market. Again, the buyers did not catch up, so I kind of averaged out a general price there. Still a huge rise on that and so those things just went absolutely crazy and the main thing there to look out for is the fact that a lot of these gears are getting manipulated because they are in low quantity and there's a low amount of listings in the steam community market they can kind of inflate the price and make it look really really desirable to newer investors as something that can just go crazy in price even though it's a little bit inflated now the really cool thing about this recent rise is that it's because it's so wide scale that there's actually a lot of new investors and regular investors that are actually buying into these items and creating a little bit more of a hype and demand around them and actually giving them a more solid price simply because the items have rose so much that these new investors are kind of jumping on the train. So the reason this episode is titled Threading the Needle is because there's kind of a major problem here and that's the fact that so much of this stuff is manipulated or will be manipulated very soon so we kind of have to find that exact area where we're going to be able to buy items for a competent price and where we're not going to kind of overpay for inflated items. So the main thing here is I kind of wanted to do the same thing I did last episode with those Vexed stickers, and I wanted to kind of buy a bulk of sort of just decent stickers that I think from those previous years are going to rise even if these inflated items and inflated prices
prices actually crash back down. So the main thing that I wanted to target here was actually Cologne 14 non-hollows. And the reason for this is because unlike Katowice 2015 non-hollows, these ones were actually available in the capsules. So if you opened a capsule, you had the option of getting a non-hollow versus the Katowice 2015 capsules where you could only get hollows or foils. So the main thing here is that there's actually a random chance and a much lower supply on these items that actually come out of the capsules. And so there's not really a risk of them being regular papers that people could have just bought in bulk for the tournament in general. So with Clone 2014, the main ones I was targeting was just ones that looked really good with that bright blue background, because it's really hard to find stickers that match that. That blue background is really overbearing and bright, so we have to find some team logos that actually match that blue background. So the main two that I targeted were going to be the Cloud9 non-holo and also the LDLC non-holo, which I think both look really, really good with that blue background, and I just think they are a pretty good looking sticker overall, a really nice looking non-holo for sure. And I think those ones are going to be great. So I went ahead and picked up a few of each of those. You can go ahead and see that here. As you can see, I went ahead and picked up three of each of those at a pretty fair price. And I think these are going to do pretty decent if these continue to get manipulated. Even though I'm not selling off items, the manipulation on them can really get a lot of their supply out of the general hands of people that may be hoarding them from a long time ago. Moving around that supply is going to do a great phenomenal thing for our investments here into these stickers because moving around that supply is going to allow them to have a much more straight path to profit. So that's going to be our first pickup for the video. Now I also also went ahead and picked up one kind of off pick, one alternative pick here, because I am sort of buying a bulk of these stickers here. So the other thing I picked up was a Fnatic clone 2014 on Hollow. Fnatic, obviously one of the most popular teams of all time, and one that I could see doing very well in the future as well. They have a very solid team at the moment, and they're doing amazing on the world rankings. So I think when the Rio Major comes up and they really show their stuff, I think they can perform really well as their stickers. So that's the reasoning behind that. Now the next thing that I went ahead and picked up was I wanted to go ahead and look at another tournament, one that was actually more recent and figure out some really cool stickers from those. So the first one that I really noticed was the Cloud9 2018 Boston Hollow, and the reason for this is because this sticker just looks absolutely insane. Like if you really look at it, it just has a very, very unique design, more unique than really any other hollow. I have seen this one in passing, never really gave it too much thought, but after looking at this for a long time, it's just a really, really cool sticker and has a great design and a lot of great coloration. Simply put, this sticker just looks absolutely phenomenal, and that's one of the main driving factors. Again, Cloud9 is one of the most recognizable esports organizations on the planet, it, so that as well is going to help them even if they aren't performing so well at tournaments. I went ahead and bought one more from Boston. I wanted to go ahead and try to do the most polar opposite from the Cloud9 Hollow, which was going to be the Mouse Hollow. And this one's a lot cheaper than the Cloud9 Hollow. The Cloud9 Hollow is actually the most expensive hollow from this entire capsule, and so the Mouse is actually one of the cheaper ones, and it is of course a polar opposite. It's actually full red and has the same sort of shatter foil design on it as well. I still think it's a really good looking one. Mouse Sports has been doing kind of just eh recently, and this one's kind of just an eh pickup. I don't really think it's going to perform like too crazy, but I did want to get a polar opposite here just so I could kind of diversify without buying like every sticker. And quick note on that, I actually think it's a really interesting strategy buying into major stickers and making sure that you're buying polar opposite stickers, ones that have just very opposite colors and or designs. And I think the main thing there is just the fact that these stickers are going to be so different that they're going to cast sort of a pseudo diversification over those major stickers that you're buying into. So you don't have to buy every single one and spend a whole bunch of money and you can kind of make sure that you have unique investments from that major specifically in case one or the other were to rise. So just sort of a theory strategy, but if you guys think it's an interesting one, it's just some food for thought, go ahead and check it out. Now the stickers continue. This is sort of our sticker episode. If you haven't noticed, again, quick aside again, I don't want to take up too much time here, but quick aside, if you haven't noticed, a lot of these episodes have sort of been pinpointing specific investments that I think are good in different areas of investing in CSGO. So for example, this episode, of course, is with stickers. And then like the previous episode, for example, was the jet set and just some cool like old collection stuff. And then there's, of course, the episode of the Katowice 2014 Hollow, so kind of getting people introduced to Katos. So that's kind of how I'm structuring this series, kind of just trying to give a wide net and a wide idea of investments that can be good. So as I was saying, the stickers continue. And this one, I actually wanted to pinpoint the Kato 19 team capsule. This one's going to be the Legends capsule for Hollow and Foil. The main reason for this is because this one's not too expensive. It has a lot of good, really nice stickers inside of it. For example, that Liquid Hollow looks just absolutely insane. And of course, it has the Astralis Foil, which is going to always be a good option and is also the most expensive one from the capsule. It's also pretty cheap right now, it's around $8, not too much of a deal there. And the main thing here is just buying a multiple amount of them. I went ahead and originally bought four, but ended up just going down to three. And then I went ahead and picked up for the kind of round out. I went ahead and picked up the Team Liquid Kato 19 Hollows. So just to reiterate, I bought three of the Kato 19 Team Capsule Legend Hollow Foils, and then I bought two of the Team Liquid Kato 19 Hollows specifically. So the main thing here is that the Team Liquid Kato 19 Hollows actually look really, really good. These are a very good design sticker. There's kind of one that has been sort of slept on. They're a pretty cheap 
cheap one as well right now and they're actually less expensive than the capsule itself and they just look really really good they have a wide array of colors on it probably a lot wider array of colors than the image would initially show off which is probably why these haven't been looked into too much but the team liquids actually have a really good like purple pinkish design it reminds me a lot of aurora borealis and the sort of shadow hollow effect on the camo background of this hollow as well just looks really good i think this is a super slept on sticker and it's one that could do really well in the future if it gets enough attention really cool one here and i went ahead and picked up two of those so that's kind of what i did for the diversification here so we have a pretty wide net set up now across a lot of different majors with a lot of different designs and a lot of different design philosophies behind them i would actually say that the liquid and the cloud nine were not the absolute perfect picks here just because the liquid and cloud nine kind of share the same design with the purple and pink sort of idea but i still think they're both really good and they're going to be both really good options going forward as an overall opinion i really think this is a good time to pick up some of these stickers even though they are being manipulated like crazy i think if you're able to sort of thread the needle as the title would imply and figure out some of those stickers that aren't too manipulated and can still do really good in the future it now is a really good time to check out those because there is the rio major coming up soon which can always make stickers spike so just make sure to keep that in mind check out all of these things that i've talked about and kind of try to figure out your own ideas and your own theories about this kind of stuff and that's going to be the episode those are going to be all the pickups for this episode here is the updated spreadsheet hoping these do really really well but with a nice differential of 88 dollars to sit on we are not really going to be losing money anytime soon so let's go ahead and check out what happens to these stickers in the coming few weeks here and hopefully we really get up there we're almost to that 500 dollars initial investment so we're going to have to hit that and then of course try to make a thousand dollars in the future i will talk about that more in the future episodes though anyway guys thank you guys for checking out this episode i really hope that you enjoyed it if you did be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you guys do enjoy this kind of stuff then there is a full discord server that you can also check out in the description below that has a whole bunch of information and a big amount of discussion over all this kind of investment knowledge and you guys can get a lot of that there also be sure to use my float market link to directly support the channel and pick up some of this stuff for yourself anyway guys be sure to check out those links in the description below and i'll see you all next time peace